Hello, y'all. Hey, my name is Damon Witzel. Today I'm going to be looking at a debate on racism and uh, is America a white supremacist country between Tariq Nasheed, the black supremacist Tariq Nasheed, and black conservative R.C. Maxwell. And I'll be trying to refute some points that I think both of them uh, made some mistakes, and I'll be trying to make a better arguments than R.C. did. Uh, I've probably been studying this issue longer than uh, R.C. has. Whenever I, I did never heard of R.C., I uh, Googled him, and he is a black conservative that was at a Trump rally and ended up getting attacked by the left, got punched, and so uh, like two pages of articles on that showed up. But And I've seen some videos of him uh, actually talking about race relations, just two videos, and he doesn't seem to be all that knowledgeable, and I've spent uh, all my time since uh, the five cops got assassinated in Dallas uh, studying this issue, and right after the five cops in Dallas, the three cops in uh, Baton Rouge got killed. Gavin Long, the killer of those three cops, was directly inspired by black supremacist Tariq Nasheed. Uh, you see right here, he was a follower of Trick Nasheed on Twitter the days before he went out and killed, assassinated those three cops. He was retweeting uh, uh, Nasheed's tweets. He was a follower of both Tweet, uh, Tariq and Umar Johnson, and he adopted some of the language that that is exclusive to Tariq, such as calling cops race soldiers. And uh, he was also influenced by the Young Turks. He, uh, Atheism uh, is Unstoppable, uh, did a good video called Young Turks Follower Assassinates Three Cops. You can find that on uh, YouTube to where it shows not only did Tariq Nasheed's rhetoric influence Gavin Long to uh, assassinate those three cops, but so did the Young Turks. And so anyway, to give a little more background about me, I have a site called uh, screwyourfeelings.com. It, it uh, focuses exclusively on this matter. I chose Screw Your Feelings because uh, and two times in one day, I had a black guy and a white guy both tell me that it doesn't matter if somebody is actually oppressed. As long as they feel they're oppressed, then they're oppressed. And so I made this site, and uh, screw your feelings, you're not oppressed just because you feel oppressed. I tried to get the F your feelings domain name, but that was already taken. I also have on my YouTube channel, uh, at Damon Witzel, just search Damon Witzel, I have about 120 videos uh, on race-related topics from Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, police brutality. I uh, got uh, 10 or 11 videos refuting Tariq Nasheed's Hidden Color movies. I've got uh, material refuting the alt-right and uh, race realist. And uh, uh, so I focused on this issue for a while, and I probably can make uh, correct some things that uh, R.C. said that I was that wasn't right, correct a whole hell of a lot of shit that Tariq said that wasn't right, and uh, maybe make some better arguments than R.C. did along the way. Whenever I seen the debate, I contacted R.C., and uh, I says, man, dude, I, uh, make sure you study Tariq more before, if, you, if you ever debate him again, because I seen the last half of the debate, and it looked worse than Jesse Lee Peterson debating Tariq, where whenever Tariq debates black people, he throws that, uh, well, you're doing the white supremacist hustle. You're hustling uh, white supremacists and getting money. You're getting paid. And I love that. I'll even give you money. But he does that instead of calling them coons or Uncle Toms, because if he calls them coons or Uncle Toms, that is a, a black man using a racial slur against another black man, as that is perceived by a lot of people as being racist in and of itself. And while Tariq does use the terms uh, uh, like Uncle Tom uh, and Coon on his streams, uh, when debates like this, he will not. And every time he debates a black guy, that is one of his main ad hominems, uh, is that they're sellouts and they're making money. And he'll go so far sometimes as uh, calling them black white supremacists. And uh, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and start uh, uh, the video up a little bit. And uh, I'll stop it and comment along the way. I'll refer sometimes to my site, uh, screwyourfeelings.com. 
and to my uh, YouTube page. Uh, and I'll put all the links down below that are relevant to this discussion and the things that I say. I'll try to uh, links to, to source everything that I say below. So uh, I'm going to stop. I have the benefit of being able to stop. I'm not going toe to toe with uh, uh, with Tariq like RC is, but RC did a real bad job. RC let him insult his manhood uh, and uh, say, well, like basically say, well, brother, I thought you was gay. Hey, I'm glad that you're married. I bet you're married to a white girl, though, you know. And and RC didn't even know enough about uh, us, Tariq to say. That hey yeah you're just a downright bigot and homophobe because you bash all the time uh, black gays and black alpha uh, black beta males as being uh, suspected gays and you got and he's got a website called Anti Moist where he ridicules them and then he doesn't even uh, you know I sent him this uh, sent RC this meme here and told him you know send this to Tariq next time because uh, you can't let the man insult your uh, manhood like that and get away with it. And he let uh, Tariq owned him on the topic of the alt-right and race realism. Uh, he let uh, Tariq associate Mike Cernovich with the alt-right when Mike Cernovich isn't alt-right. He's alt-light. There's a difference. The alt-right ties in the white supremacist uh, a notion that the whites are superior, they're race realists, and say that the uh, fact of the matter, IQ variance between the races is because of genetics, and whenever you study the topic, it's mostly due to uh, 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 nature, it's either nature over nurture, so it's mostly nurture over nature, they say it's nature over nurture, and uh, so maybe I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But there were several ways that I seen that Tariq just owned RC. So I hope that he will watch this and other people will watch it and will learn a little bit. And so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and start it and stop every once in a while and make some comments. Very special treat for you tonight. We have none other than RC Maxwell, Maxwell a.k.a. At Black Hannity on Twitter and Tariq Nasheed. Um, this is going to be a debate hosted on the Cernovich media platform. So I hope you guys enjoy and it should be a very lively discussion. So I'll let you guys take it away. R.C. Maxwell at Black Hannity and Tariq Nasheed at Tariq Nasheed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So again, um, I, I semi introduced our brother R.C. Maxwell. Um, again, he's. Um, I, I would consider him basically a mascot for the alt-right. Um, again, he's basically auditioning for a Fox gig. That's why he has the name Black Hannity. So he, he's really pandering to that audience. But it's, it, And I, I get it. I respect the hustle. I know it's a hustle. I used to be in the streets. I know hustling. And I respect it to a certain degree. And that's Yeah, so there's three ad, ad homonyms there in a row. He's associating the guy with the alt-right. And, of course, he's playing... The hustle card, instead of calling them Uncle Tom, yeah, you're really hustling them white supremacists and making some money at it. And so right from the bat, RC is going to point out that he's using the logical fallacies of ad hominems later. But I'd like to point out something here. That's why I'm here. Now, with, with that being said, let me introduce my brother now. RC, on his Facebook page, he's an admitted troll. He says that he's a proud American troll. Now, that's on his page. Now, let me say this here. Now, if we are trying to have a... Uh, I looked uh, at his, no, I looked at his Twitter page. That might be on his Facebook page, but it's not on his Twitter page. Real discussion, that's fine. If you start trolling, I'm going to take that as you conceding the feet, and then that'll be it. But And see there, Tariq stacks the deck. If I consider you as trolling, that's going to be it. I'm going to do the victory dance. And, well, actually trolling, Tariq will change the definition of trolling to apply it how he wants. But in reality, everybody's a troll whenever you're talking about these kind of race, uh, because trolling is just trying to evoke an emotion out of someone. And you'll see back and forth, they're trolling each other, trying to evoke emotions out of each other instead of getting down to the statistics and the facts, where if R.C. Maxwell had become, had come loaded with facts and statistics, he would eventually have Tariq Nasheed saying 
things like, well, those statistics are white supremacist statistics. They don't count. And it's not true just because you're white and you say so and all this stuff. And so uh, R.C. should have studied a lot more before he come at it. And he should have pointed out here that Tariq's already stacked the deck that if he perceives R.C. as trolling, then R.C. has already lost the debate and he's going to end the stream. This is happening. R.C. appeared on Street, Tariq's uh, live stream on Ustream, and somehow they're streaming it also to Cervanovich's page on uh, Facebook. Nevertheless, how are you, brother? Doing great. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, much of your int introduction was not accurate, but I'm sure your listeners are used to you being inaccurate, so not, not much of a shock there. Uh, not auditioning for Fox News. Uh See, he took a couple of pops back, and he got on the defensive. You never should have got let Trick put you on the defensive wide away, brother. You shouldn't have done that. Uh, I'm happy with my job running American Voice Pack, and yes, I'm pretty much their cheerleader. I'm, I'm their I'm their public face, um, and that's a CL Bryant Pack who is a brother who used to be involved in the NAACP before he left the plantation. So. Instead of defending yourself, you should have attacked his shoddy debate tactics that he's already used uh, at homes, that he's already stacked the deck or done special pleading to, to, to already assure that he's going to appear to neutral, most neutral people and to his followers like he's won the debate no matter how it goes. There's still hope for you yet. I think when C.O. Bryant insult. was your age, he was still working for the Democratic masses. So R.C.'s going to troll Tariq, and Tariq's going to troll uh, R.C. So later on, whenever Tariq starts calling R.C. a troll, just remember that Tariq's trolling too. Uh, there's hope for you yet, Tariq. Okay, and already he's starting the whole straw man Democratic deflection, and that's another popular deflection tactic that white supremacists use. And in my opinion, uh, R.C. didn't really straw man that much there. So in turn, Tariq was actually straw man in him. He's psychologically projecting. And they allow their mascots to use. So understand, you're going to hear a lot of that. Well, it's the Democrats' fault, that type of stuff. And you know my theory. There is no such thing as a Republican or a Democrat. We only have um, white supremacy right and right white supremacy left. So it's all the same. But... But actually, in reality, a lot of the people on the left are advocates, are anti-racist, the social justice warriors on the left. The only people that agree with Tariq are the far left social justice warriors. You'll find the far left social justice warriors, black supremacists and white supremacists, they believe in racial superiority or uh, that racism is a big, huge problem in America, that cops are killing blacks. Uh, the black lives narratives that uh, the huge chunk of the population of America don't think that black lives matter. And so uh, I forgot where I was going with that, so we'll just turn it back on and I'll comment again. Again, don't be fooled by the deflections. That's really all they can do. But anyway, so we're talking today. The debate is, are we in a system of white supremacy? And I Okay. Obviously, white supremacy does exist, but on a personal level, there is the belief that people hold that whites are inferior to blacks. But there is also a black supremacy problem. Before the election, before eight years of Obama, the, the racist uh, Nazis, white supremacists, they were pretty well irre irrelevant. After eight years of the Democrats and the Obama administration calling all whites racist and uh, uh, being very anti-white male. Uh, they have grown after the election. Uh, whenever Clinton brought up the term alt-right, it brought the alt-right to the forefront. And let's say something about the alt-right is that at first people turned, uh, uh, used to call not mainstream conservatives or mainstream Republicans the alternative right. And so people like Spencer took that and shortened it down to the alt-right, and they applied it to themselves, but they added the white supremacist component. And so, like, if you listen to people like the dudes over at Daily Stormer, they'll tell you that people like Cervanovich and even 
uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, they are not real alt-right that like they accuse uh, uh, Milo of hijacking the uh, movement. And since then, uh, Cervanovich, he kind of went down this road. He closely affiliated with some of the people. He later denounced it, but said that he wasn't going to attack those people on the alt-right. I think that he should have, but he said that he wanted to, uh, because conservatives and centrists believe a lot of things that the alt-right does minus the white supremacy components. They're against illegal immigration. They're against social justice warriors. Uh, they're against the Democrats. They're right-leaning. They are capitalists, uh, free market, uh, all these different things. And so in the beginning when the alt-right come to the forefront, a big chunk of people appear to be alt-right. And now as you study the issue, a lot of the people that used to appear as alt-right are differentiating themselves and saying, we're not right, right, we're not race realists, we're not racist, we're not white supremacists, we just believe a lot of other things that the right wing and conservatives and Republicans believe, and these people also believe that. But, and then, uh, classic liberals and centrists, only the neoliberals, the alt-left, the uh, social justice warrior uh, wing of the left of the Democratic Party, uh, Everybody else in the middle between the two extremes uh, do not see racism as a big problem, and they confront people, uh, uh, black, both black and white supremacists, social justice warriors on both sides, because people like Tariq are actual social justice warriors also. They're just on the right, and they see injustices, and they're trying to bring about social justice. So there's the left and the right social justice warriors. Everybody in the middle is against them. And Our so brother, I'll comment more. Mr. Robert Maxwell, kind of agree, disagrees with that. Now, do you still disagree with that, sir? Uh, well, absolutely, uh, especially given my research, um, the facts show that in 2017, shock, no, we're not in a system of white supremacy. So, so uh, you know, uh, I'm definitely excited to see how you can. Okay, more on white supremacy. There is no systemic white supremacy. Uh, the laws are even, the laws are even tilted, as RC is going to point out later. Uh, that the laws are even tilted towards minorities because there's, instead of people on the left and people like Tariq Nasheed, they want equality of outcome instead of equality of opportunity. Well, the law guarantees that we all have the equality of opportunity, but nobody's going to get equality of uh, outcome, but this is what the social justice warriors on both sides want. But so the the uh, the system itself is race neutral. But there can be racists, like there can be a white judge that'll give a black man a harsher sentence. There can also be a black judge that'll give a black a white man a harsher a harsher sentence. There's uh even though there's more white bosses, uh, black bosses can also anybody that has authority or power in the government in business. Or anything, they can discriminate against people of their uh, other other races because they are personally racist, but not because the system is racist. In fact, the system says that if they get caught exhibiting that racism and discriminating against people based on the color of their skin and race, they can be prosecuted. So the system is neutral. It can go back back and forth a little bit both ways. People within the system both ways can be racist. So white supremacists and, uh, exist as in, in, individuals that believe in white supremacy, but there is no white systemic uh, or governmental white supremacy anymore. Describe uh, our current system as one of being ingrained in white supremacy. Uh, yeah. I don't know how you don't see it as completely diluted as a power structure. Okay. Well, we're in a system of white supremacy because the people who created the global system, they said verbally and they made a conscious effort to make it about white supremacy. The forefathers of America, almost all of them, verbally said that this is a system of white supremacy. That is uh, very false. None of them uh, said that. The founders actually believed, when you study the issue, most of the founders actually believed they hated 
uh, the, uh, uh, the institution of racism, and they believe that it would eventually die out. And he's going to bring up the Dred Scott decision uh, here in a little bit to try to uh, say that Dred Scott is a racist law, and we'll go into more on that uh more about that um, a little bit. They spread white supremacy globally by name. There are laws that are still on the books that uses the term white supremacy. And I would like to know when that system. No, the Dred Scott decision doesn't use the term white supremacy or nothing like that. There's no actual laws that use any term white supremacy or at all. Was removed. Um, well, you know, I, I really like to get into particularisms. Um, yeah, not... it didn't have to be removed because they were never there in the first place. Even our founding documents, uh, you know, our uh, Declaration of Independence uh, talks about all men are created equal. And the, uh, our, the country was founded on that principle, even though the institution of slavery was brought over from England back at that time, everybody was slaves and slavery has actually existed in the human race before we even started recording history and before we could even speak languages. Uh, uh, you dig up all kinds of things around the world uh, that will show that. I'm not quite sure, particularly which, which kind of laws on the book currently um, allow for white supremacy. Uh, to, to dominate. Also, I think it's very important. Let me let me give that. Let me. Hold, I, I'll be glad to give that. Let's get into that. I, I, I like to give truth to power. Let's go to the Dred Scott decision. Um, the Dred Scott decision uses the term white supremacy and black inferiority over and no, over does. again. And no, the it does not. Dred Scott decision is still the law of the land. No, they it is not. The, the Dred Scott decision never did become set of precedents uh, because it was uh, basically. Only a few slaves, uh, the, the Democrats, by the way, the people that pushed through Dred and Scott were both Democrats, and the only people that supported the decision was a, a handful of slave-owning states and slave owners, plantation owners, that supported the Dred Scott decision. Everybody, every Republican, everybody on the uh, right back then, they all denounced it. Uh, the, a lot of the people... Uh, that that opposed the Dred Scott decision, and a lot of historians since then have said that the Dred Scott decision is the worst decision that the Supreme Court has ever made, and most time whenever a new ruling is made, it sets precedents, but it was so unpopular that it did not set precedents. The Dred Scott decision is basically where a black guy wanted to uh, become a citizen of the United States. And the Democrats argued in court that the founding documents and the principles of the founders that said that the Constitution and our founders and the intent of the uh, founders was that only white people could be uh, uh, citizens. But at the time, there were three northern states that allowed blacks to be citizens before the Dred Scott decision. So it, it was not true that that uh, that most people back then thought that. You have to remember that there was also slavery in the North, but we'll get into some more of that in a little bit. The 14th and 13th Amendment was supposed to nullify the Dred Scott decision, but it, it did, did not because we still, as black people in America, we do not have our 13th and 14th Amendment rights protected. We are killed with impunity. We do not get the the um, option to utilize the court system to help us in a way that's going to be fair and equitable. So that means the Dred Scott decision meaning, and the basis of the Dred Scott decision is a black man has no rights that a white man is bound to respect. That is still the law of... No, there's a, a lot that was wrong there. I tried to stop it a couple times. I was going to say something. But uh, cops do not kill without impunity. Uh, uh, a lot of time, cops... RC is going to uh, address some of this in a little bit, but I, whenever we get to that, I'll say a lot about police brutality. The land, as a matter of fact, the Dred Scott decision was used in a court case last year, and somebody won the case. After the fact, they kind of scraped it from the record. I don't know about that, and uh, everything that I uh, researched, claimed by Treat Machine in his Hidden Color movies, 
was false, so I seriously doubt this, because there was no precedent set by the Dred Scott case. But you cannot unring a bell. So that further shows that the Dred Scott Supreme Court decision is still a valid document, and it is used all the time. So, so, so no, just that not. I have your line of argumentation right, you're saying because there is, uh, you know, kind of one of those situations where there's an old flunky law on the books that, that hasn't been struck down. To Before we move on, I'd like to tell you about an article that I wrote called is uh, uh, Racism in America DNA, where I cover the Dred Scott decision in detail. And uh, one of the things about it is, is that uh, after the decision, uh, it was a lot of prominent people spoke out about it. Uh, I was in a debate, and it was basically a guy claimed the same thing that Tariq Nasheed is claiming. Uh, the guy claimed, uh, well, so anyway, uh, Douglas, uh, the black uh, uh, abolitionist, uh, Douglas, I can't remember his, uh, the black guy with the, uh, uh, but anyway, he did a speech on the Dred Scott decision to where he totally refuted and denounced uh, the Dred Scott decision. You will see that link here under uh, screwyourfeelings.com. The article is Racism Really in America's DNA. And uh, then you talk about uh, Mr. Douglas, uh, uh, Frederick Douglas, in a speech called uh, What the Fourth of July Means to the Negro, says of our uh, Constitution, says, interpreted as it ought to be interpreted, the Constitution is a glorious liberty document. Read its preamble, consider its purposes. Is slavery among them? Is it at the gateway or is it at the temple? It is neither. Take the Constitution according to its plain reading, and I defy the presentation of a single pro-slavery clause in it. On the other hand, it will be found to contain principles and purposes entirely hostile to the existence of slavery. And so the Dred Scott claim made the claim that our principles were uh, racist in, uh, in intent and in uh, language. But here, Frederick Douglass denounces that, and you can get more into, uh, like a lot of people say, they don't understand what the three-fifths clause is. Uh, they think that uh, that the Constitution says that black people are three-fifths of a person, but that's not exactly it. There was a compromise between the North and the South. The North didn't want the slaves that couldn't vote in the South to be counted towards for representation, state representation. So the, they made an agreement that the southern states would only count three of every five slaves as going towards representation. Uh, and there's also the fugitive play, say, uh, slave clause that I make some good comments on about there. So you can go back and read that article. It's in the context about this. Everything that Tariq says will put it in perspective for you your liking, because that exists, we're in a complete system of white supremacy. See, that in and of itself is the epitome of a, a fallacy. And that's the yes, problem with debates contextualized from your side. And when I mean your side, I don't mean the left side of the aisle. So we're freezing. Hello. There's a lot of problem okay. in this debate. Oh, the RC's on, video the feed lags a lot. Reload. Looks like we lost his. But sorry about that. We lost your. And Tariq uh, capitalizes on it several like times. Back. Okay, okay, there you go. So, so just so we're clear, white supremacy is literally the belief that white people are superior <laughs> and that there is a pretty much a societal function that makes sure is that whites dominate society. So the Dred Scott decision, uh, which, which by the way, uh, is not law of the land. Um, no, it's African Americans not. and a, a litany of diverse individuals are literally protected classes. The protected class. It's, it's literally illegal to persecute these people. So obviously, uh, you were to speak in generalities, and you said literally that black people continue to be persecuted, which is also just untrue. You and I are black people. We are not currently being persecuted by any system, and that's because we're flourishing members of a productive society. So obviously, there are individuals in society that do 
uh, you know, uh, they get obfuscated in a certain way. way. The, res the reason why that's happening isn't white supremacy, and it isn't just happening to black people. It happens to people who engage in societal taboos. One of those taboos... Well, I uh, disagree there. I think that people that have privilege are people that have money, and some of the best privileges that you can have is going to be brought up later is to be born into a two-parent household with two uh, parents that are going to love and nurture you and help you become successful in the world. ...in society is white supremacy. In 2017, white supremacy is a taboo, so I don't understand how you can seriously say with a straight face that white supremacy is, is literally everywhere. Okay, let's go back. And, I and gave he, you does, a case. he does make a good point. It is taboo. Tariq and Masheed will make it seem like since Trump won, the men of white supremacists are coming out. That's because they're putting the focus on the alt-right and the white supremacists and making it seem to be more of a problem and that they have more power than they actually do. When the reality is that most white people on the right and on the left do not believe that Racism and white supremacy is a big problem today. The only people that think it's a big problem is the people like Tariq Nasheed and the alt-left or the social justice warrior types. Law that's still on the books that you can look up now, and you use the white daddy said so argument where that is a fallacy, and it's not a fallacy. You can go look the law up. I'm not. This is not my opinion. The law is still valid. No, uh, the law is still valid. Take his, uh, take his challenge up and go look at it. The law is still practiced, so that law is not a fallacy. What is a fallacy is that black people are a protected class. We're not a protected white. He didn't say white people are a protected class. He said minorities are. And legally, although they do have some advantages now that they're given because of the perceived uh, 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 differences in achievement, they want equality of outcome instead of equality of opportunity. And because they see uh, inequality in outcomes, they give special preferences to minorities over blacks in the law to a certain extent. And in the media, in, the, uh, in academia, and in popular culture, yes, minorities are protected class and white people are a persecuted class because you just recently had when 4chan started a big deal by putting just putting posters up that it's okay to be white and it called a, a ruckus you know everybody can can be proud to be a mexican but can be proud to be white but you can't be proud uh, i mean proud to be black but you can't be proud to be white to me i've never considered myself proud to be white because i wasn't born uh uh, had any control over what I was born, but I am proud to be an American, and I'm definitely not ashamed to be white. And uh, people, white people that are ashamed of being white, kind of uh, insult me and piss me off. Class in this country, you can kill if you're a person who is classified as white, especially if you work for the government. You can legally kill a black person for any reason and use any "I'm white and I say so" excuse. Nope. Name the race soldiers who pose as cops who are punished for killing black folks. Now, Tariq's going to talk about racism. And here he is judging a whole group of people, all cops, as race soldiers. Well, let me say something here now about uh, police brutality. You know, there's over 750,000 armed law enforcement officers that have enforcement react inter interactions with civilians every year. Uh, and they have about three and a half interactions per day with citizens. So whenever you look at it, there's like some 700 and over 750,000, I mean 750 million interactions that police officers have with enforcement interactions they have with civilians every year. And out of those 750 million interactions, less than a thousand people get killed every year. And then whenever you look at them all, anywhere between, uh, really a, most years lower than a dozen, but between a dozen and two dozen are what we would call bad shoots that are not just uh, justifiable uh, uh, uses of reasonable force or deadly force. And so whenever you look at it, there's very few 
uh, bad cops. Uh, most of them, whenever you look at the numbers, because uh, uh, like 24 out of uh, 750 million, that's like 0 .008 zeros and then 8. And so whenever you round that off, you'd have to say that 100% uh, instead of going to 99.9%, .9%, you have to go up to 100% of all cops do a good job every day, every single day of the year, and have no incidences, and do a lot of good while they're doing a dangerous job that is underappreciated, and they have now become a persecuted class themselves, uh, because in the last two years, the number of cops shot and killed has risen by 73%, and almost 40 cops have been assassinated by ambush in the last two years alone. And this is due to the false narrative of the Black Lives Matter uh, movement and the left and the social justice warriors and a large part of the Democratic Party that cops are unjustly and racially motivated to hunt black guys in the street. But the reality is, is that the big uh, elephant in the room that nobody, everybody that believes uh, that blacks are oppressed, no matter uh, whether they're social justice warriors or people like Tariq, the one thing they have in common is that they do not take black criminality into account. Whenever I've sat down and looked at all the numbers, in reality, if you look at the dispar disparity between the outcomes of blacks and the disparities uh, uh, of the crime rates, black men are six and a half percent of the population and commit over 50 percent of the violent crimes. And this just isn't that they're charged. They actually, their studies that after people, uh, uh, that they just poll random people and ask them if they've ever got into a crime and ask what the race of the crime, uh, criminal that committed the crime is, and that matches up with the same thing as the, like the FBI statistics. So more on average, there's a disparity between the number of blacks killed by cops and the number of whites killed by cops on a per capita basis because there's five times more whites in America than blacks and blacks get killed uh, on uh, about two and a half times more often than uh uh, than whites do on a per capita basis. But when you look at all the crime rates, uh, black criminality rate is almost 10 times that of white America. Uh, I have on my, uh, let's go ahead and run through a lot of stats here on my uh, website here. I have a lot of stats we'll run through real quick. Uh, we'll go to some statistics. We can go off of the uh, the headlines. Uh, in 2015, the FBI reported that on a per capita basis, blacks commit 2.4 times more hate crimes. Uh, the number of black people killed, this is interesting, by cops has uh, decreased 70% in the last 40 to 50 years. This is uh, uh, according to studies by the Centers of Juvenile and Criminal Justice and the Centers for Disease Control. And also, blacks are 160 times more likely to die at the hands of another black person than in a cop. Than a cop. Whenever you jive those numbers, here the FBI says that from 2015 to 2014, 40% of all cop killers were black men, despite the fact that they're only 6% of the population. And uh, uh, here it shows the statistics where uh, more cops are getting killed whenever you look. Uh, if you go each year, the FBI puts out crime statistic rates by race, and in the only categories that whites are disproportionately commit more crime is in white or blue collar or professional crime and drinking while driving or drinking while intoxicated. And that's probably because a large amount of urban dwellers where they don't have cars are black people. And so that might cause the disparity there. But uh, they've done uh, results like uh, New Jersey got accused by the uh, Department of Justice of racially pro profiling black people and giving them more tickets. 
And so the DOJ ordered them to do a study, and they do, did a study and found that actually black people just commit more traffic crimes, and instead of over-profiled, they were actually underrepresented, and the DOJ did not like that outcome. So uh, Obama's administration, DOJ, did their own test and found the same thing. And so blacks are not getting uh, uh, arrested more because they're being profiled more. The fact of the matter is, is that they commit more crimes. Most of them live in the urban areas where crime are high and require uh, more police patrolling. The good citizens in these ghettos and in the inner, inner city urban areas that are dominated by the thugs, they're begging for the cops to come and help them out. And so they're the ones asking uh, for uh, the cop, high cop presence. Uh, there's like sentencing disparities. You'll see people like Tariq Nasheed say that the criminal justice system is racist because uh, more p uh, black people get arrested for crack and cocaine doesn't have as long as the sentence is uh, a powder cocaine doesn't have as much a long a sentence, harsh a sentence as uh, crack cocaine. But there's the disparity between a powder meth and things like ice and rock meth, which more whites do than black, there's the same thing. And it was the the Congressional Black Caucus and the individual uh, uh, black-run governments in liberal states and in liberal cities that call for harsher sentences, sentencing uh, uh, to be done for crack over powder cocaine. And also, whites cried out that people that do rack, uh Rock meth should be sentenced more harshly than people found with powder meth. And so on my uh, website, on my uh, YouTube page, I have a video that lists 11 articles that show that the criminal racist, criminal justice system is not racist. A couple of videos from uh, Larry Elder uh, making the very same point and showing why the criminal justice system isn't racist. And so whenever you look at all these, the crime amount of crime, the, the disparity uh, between the amount of cops that get shot and killed between blacks and whites, if you take all the crime statistics into factor, black people should be get, getting shot and killed by cops about two times more than they do now. And I have a video on uh, uh, my channel that speaks more about why uh, black people should actually get killed a lot more by cops than they actually do because black criminality is just out of control and that's fueled not by a biased racist, uh, 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 racist justice system but because of the black culture, the subculture, the underclass is uh, thuggery is celebrated. Uh, you get street cred for shooting somebody or going to prison. Uh, they not only tolerate violence of criminals, they encourage it, and there's the no snitch rule, the good people will not stand up to the thugs, will not work with the cops, and and then whenever you got black people calling black people white for doing good and trying to succeed and not act like a thug, these are all forms of uh, th that right there is self-oppression, black people oppressing black people by saying that if you do uh, good things to succeed in life, you're acting white. And whenever you put all these things together, you can see that the inequities uh, in the in in uh, all the uh, underachievements of blacks is not due to racism, but mostly because of culture, a dysfunctional uh, subculture within Black America, the underclass is more dominant than in other races. Other races keep their underclass down. Uh, for some reason, black America uh, tolerates their underclass. You have the uh, rap music industry uh, that glorifies the underclass and thug subculture. And so it's a problem. Uh, you can see more videos on my uh, YouTube channel addressing this. Let's get back to this video. Give me a name of it. 
so what you're so right now you're deviating into no no I, I, I like an answer what, what, what no, I would like an answer I just like an answer to that see your I would question like an Nadine, your, your question name is name name the black people are a protected class right. since so many black people are killed by what we call race soldiers working as law enforcement name the ones who are getting punished for killing black people name them that's not an issue of white supremacy how about name the ones that aren't and worse than that, name me just one cop that killed a black guy and it was ruled an unjustified uh, use of deadly force and then they found out that the motive was racism and not a mistake or, or just the guy was an asshole. But like they went to his Facebook page, found that he was uh, associated closely with white supremacy, that he had made a lot of racist comments, talked about how he hated black people and he should have been found out and dismissed from the police force beforehand. Name me one of those, Tariq. I see, Tariq, that's a legal decision. You name it, them. There is a legal precedent in the United States that says that if you are an officer of, of the law, you are allowed to make certain mistakes on the job as long as you're not doing so that is not necessarily true they're not allowed to make mistakes they're held to their mistakes but they are uh whenever it becomes that they feel that their life is in jeopardy they do have the right to defend themselves but they are also the judges and the juries look into it even if they have fear uh, for their life they look into it to see if that was a reasonable fear. And so even if they do not make a mistake and they were just afraid when they weren't supposed to be, they would lose their job. And any white cop that shoots a black person or really any, any cop of any race that shoots a black person is going to be accused of being a white supremacist or a racist. Look at uh, 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 Martin, uh, Trayvon Martin. And what's his name? The dude that killed him wasn't even a cop, wasn't even uh, a white dude. But people will still use him as an example of uh, white racism and police brutality by a white, by cops. And it's just all a bunch of bullshit. With some sort of specific, right, there's a specific bright line that has to be proved to uh, pr uh, to prosecute or charge any officer of the law with a crime. So that's so, not so, an issue so of every, white supremacy. So every black, that, that, every black person, so all, all these black people being killed with impunity by law enforcement are mistakes. That's what you're saying. They're not they're killed without of judgment, Right. So the, the bright line okay. is you, you would have to so. prove that not only is you would have to prove that a cop was specifically engaging in a certain reckless abandon to cause bodily injury to someone or bodily harm to someone. You can't just say that's a bad shoot. This cop needs to be arrested. And that's not an issue of white supremacy. That's a legal distinction. That's a legal distinction that cops get. That's a pretty necessary one because you don't want cops being gun shy when they have split second decisions to make in order to say. And there are studies out there that show that actually cops are getting uh, getting killed more often. One of the reasons is because of the uh, anti-cop rhetoric from Black Lives Matter in the media. But another reason is because they're being more hesitant. There's also three studies out there that shows that minority cops are more quicker to shoot a black a suspect than a white cop because a white cop knows if he has to shoot a black under any circumstance, even though it's obvious that he had to do so to save his own life, he's going to be ridiculed in the public court and found guilty and humiliated and might even have his life put in jeopardy just because a black thug attacked him or resisted arrest, might have been trying to take his gun and he had to shoot him. But the Black Lives Matter crowd, people like Tariq Nasheed, it doesn't matter. If a white cop kills a black cop, it's on, no matter if it was just or unjust. Save someone's life. So obviously it's very easy to look at individual examples and then say, oh, look, this black person died, this one died, white supremacy exists. No, that's a fallacy. You, you can't use individual, you would have to necessarily, you, you, my, 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 what I'm explaining to you, Tariq, what you seem not to understand is you have a burden of proof to prove that society is on a trajectory that upholds white supremacy. So let's go back to the mistakes. How about a burden of proof where Tariq Nasheed claimed with uh, Andy Schultz that America is more racist now than it ever was? And uh, Schultz, you, you should see that video because the white boy Schultz 
uh, Tariq seems to do good against black guys because he can pull the, uh, yeah, your job and the white people and making money off the white supremacy card, but he can't do that on white people. So white people tend to do better, but Schultz really called him out and made him look like a fool for stating that America's more racist now than it ever was because, I mean, the difference between slavery, uh, you know, 200 years ago, Tariq would have been a slave. Now he's a millionaire uh, living in a million-dollar home, living in a white neighborhood, married to a half-white uh, a woman, got a, a white mother-in-law staying in his house. Back in those days, he would have been killed for uh, getting close to a white woman and to marrying a, a mixed-race uh, person and having more mixed race babies. And so the idea that Tariq says that America's more racist now than ever is laughable. How about you prove that, Tariq? Sir, sir, you said all these black people getting killed with impunity is a mistake. Why are all these mistakes only happening to black people? I can They're tell you not why. People only like happening you, to black people. Uh, a good proportion of the unjust uh, kills, the bad shoots, do happen to white people. It's not just black people. Open your freaking eyes, Tariq. People like you only show whenever black people get killed. Uh, here in a little bit, he's going to, uh, Tariq's going to ask RC something like, uh, well, name me a cop that shot a, uh, 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 unjustly shot a, a black guy and got away with it. Well, how about uh, name Tariq, name me 10 black white guys that got killed by cops that you don't know. I bet I can name 10 black guys that got killed by cops, and I can also prove that probably 9 of the 10 were justified killings and not uh, instances of police brutality or cops hunting black guys. you seen the video of Eric Garner getting choked. What right. was he doing? What was he saying? He was saying, I don't, oh, these cops again, I don't want this. And he was completely agitated against the cops. He didn't have any respect for them, despite the fact that he was literally selling cigarettes illegally. Was you know, if you're going to commit a crime, you need to be willing to at least reconcile the moment that takes place when you have to, you know, pretty much, uh, uh, you know. Uh, so, selling when, cigarettes, so selling cigarettes is a death sentence. It's not a death sentence, but when you're selling cigarettes and the officers are trying to get you into no, a position where they can... No, but resisting arrest is if you put the officer's life in danger, uh, he would have only gotten a ticket, as R.C. is fixing to point out here. But when you resist arrest and put the officer's life in danger, you're going to get shot and you're going to get killed, no matter if you're black or American Indian or Asian or white. Cops are going to go home at the end of the day. They're not going to let themselves get killed by a thug and not go home to their family. Detain you and so on and so He probably would have got a ticket. It sounds like that's an infractionable offense, or he, he likely would have gotten a ticket. But the problem is people like you literally uh, prop up uh, negative beliefs and certain negative connotations with the police and the white people as a whole. And people like you and your ideology are literally setting back race relations uh, so, uh, nearly so, a century. So, so the Constitution yes, yes, yes. says the punishment must fit the law. The punishment must fit the crime, rather. And by the way, he wasn't selling cigarettes. But even if he was, the punishment does not fit the crime, according to the Constitution. You're not supposed to kill people. Actually, that's not what the Constitution says. The Constitution says that the laws must be applied uh, equally among the races. That's what the 13th and 14th Amendment did. One gave the right to vote and the other made it illegal to, to discriminate on any basis by the government or by the private sector, either in hiring or whatever. And so, yes, black people do have equality now, uh, uh, equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome, uh, regardless of what Tariq says. Over a minor infraction that you perceive. So you're saying that the Constitution should not be valid for Eric Garner? No, I'm saying that just because police officers could stand potentially to undergo a little more training uh, in certain situations and so on and so forth, that doesn't prove that white supremacy but, but, but exists. The, but the you're literally, I'm talking constitutional law. The Constitution says specifically the punishment must fit the crime. Killing a person on... I bet you can't quote me that line out of the Constitution, Tariq. You're no constitutional scholar, so don't act like it. 
a camera for selling cigarettes is unconstitutional, sir. Is it not? It's not unconstitutional, but it's illegal to resist arrest. If you resist arrest to the point where you endanger the cop, it's legally uh, permissible for the cop to defend his life and to kill you. That's not why Eric Garner died. Eric Garner died because he didn't have respect for the law and he did not listen to those officers' demands. It's, um, not, it's not listening to a demand by, is that a death sentence too? I would, no, not definitely not by my- Yes, if you're being told don't resist, if you're given that command and you keep resisting, that's against the law. Standards, but that doesn't mean- white then, we agree. Then, we, then we agree, then we agree that um, this constant disregard of the constitution is very problematic in the system of white supremacy because in the system of white red supremacy, hairy, we're still in the God decision. So, so thank you. You pretty much proved that to me. So let's move on to the next thing where we're talking about. You were saying that it's people like me who prop up a negative connotation. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming you mean that this makes law enforcement want to violate the Constitution by targeting black people. Is that what you're implying, sir? They don't no, I'm just implying people. in the totality, people with your ideology sets race relations back and, you know, any black teens or people, young black scholars, people who are in college, people that listen to your beliefs, you literally do a detriment to the entire race. So that, that's kind of really just an aside. But uh, in, in terms of... Wait, 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 okay, you, let me, let's unpack that. You said set relations, race relations back from what? Yes, you do. From, from, the, from where we were going. Yeah, I, I would say that... Where are we going? Where are we going? Well, right. Because 12 years ago, most Americans thought racism uh, was almost had almost died out in America. And that includes uh, most blacks. But people like you continue to stir up blacks. Everybody that you associate with in your Hidden Colors movies, all the pro-black, black consciousness, uh, Afrocentric people that uh, Tariq associates with are part of the civil rights industry. Uh, like Al Sharpton and all them, they make money, uh, Tariq makes money, even though he's a black supremacist talking about white supremacy all the time. And he has to have white supremacy because if there's not the perception of white, uh, 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 white supremacy, then he cannot make money. And one thing about Tariq is, is that people don't realize enough that he is a black supremacist, does believe that blacks are uh, genetically in, uh, superior, and all the time he makes money off of uh, saying white, uh, white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy, when in reality, Tariq started off as a rapper, and that was contributing to the downfall of the black community, uh, oppressing the black community. Uh, then he started writing books about pimping. That is teaching black people how to oppress other black people by setting the environment to where everybody has to be a thug and be a pimp to be black. So Tariq Nasheed went from actively supporting the oppression of black people, things that would keep bar black people from being successful, to them turning around and start making money uh, uh, talking about white supremacy instead of making money harming black people in the beginning. And so he is, when he talks about hustle, when he says that R.C. and other black conservatives are hustling, earlier he said, yeah, I'm from the, I've been around and, and I know what the hustle is about. Yes, he knows what the hustle is about because he's been hustling for money. I bet the guy probably has never worked a good, decent job that wasn't a hustle in his whole life. Now, where we're going is we're actually going to an inverse trajectory of white supremacy. What we see is actually domination and supremacy by non-white persons. Um, and in fact, where society is going with progressivism and progress, um, you know, the, the more unique you are, the more rights you have. So if you are a Jewish, transsexual Muslim, you're likely Victim to be oppression. able to, uh, you're, you're a functionally the dominant Minority one in society. Privilege. So that's where we are in society. Um, and I think there's many things that Victim prove that. Uh, the fact that white supremacy is a social taboo, the fact that affirmative action exists, um, the fact that... Um, Why does affirmative action exist? Why does it exist? exist? Let me explain to you why it exists. Uh, even in situations... It exists because there's a perceived inequality of outcome among blacks and liberals are trying to make the outcome equal by giving favoritism 
to minorities. But whenever you look, if you listen to uh, black conservatives like Thomas Sowell, Larry Elder, uh, Shelby Steele, they'll all tell you that actually liberal policies, if black people are oppressed, they're oppressed by liberal policies because things like the war on poverty and the welfare state, they are oppressive to anybody. Anybody that gets free stuff is going to be less motivated, is going to be less, less successful. They give you just enough money to keep you in poverty to where if people could break the addiction to hands outs, they would actually do good for themselves. But liberal uh, policies affect black people more disproportionately than other races, and that's because that's intentional from uh, LBJ whenever he initiated the uh, uh, the Great Society, and in the 60s when they started the war on poverty, uh, they disproportionately aimed and targeted at minorities, at blacks. They used to send around uh, people to sign them up in the neighborhoods. And whenever you get on uh, welfare, you're not able to have a, a husband in the house. You're not able to work on the side to make extra money. So your money's always limited. You're destined to, to poverty, not extreme poverty. You'll be people that are on welfare and remain in poverty. They're much richer and well off than uh, people all across the world. Blacks are better off in America than they are almost anywhere else in the world. And Tariq and people like him do not take this kind of stuff into account. Where affirmative action is not supposed to be applied, there are job postings where Flat out, you can just say, I'm not looking to hire a straight white male. That is you can true. Literally put that on your job posting. No one will flag you for harassment. You won't get in any sort of legal trouble. You can just flat out do But say, we're not going to hire blacks or Hispanics. And a lawsuit, the EEOC will be in on it on a second. And all the civil rights groups that. right there will. Um, you can't sir, do that. Sir, you can't say, sir, I won't hire a black person. Sir. Sir, you're doing the whole Ben Shapiro talking thing. Sir, stop it. White supremacy is affirmative Another action. Ad That's the biggest affirmative action program in the history of mankind. White supremacy itself is affirmative action. Benefits, privileges, and protections based on race. That's affirmative action. Even the affirmative action that's supposed to be given to black people, which was corrective action, which was to correct all of the white... It's meant to correct inequality of outcome. And there's never going to be equality in outcome among the races. All races achieve, on average, lower or, or higher than other races. It's just a fact of life, just like individuals. Within my family, more, uh, some people are more successful than others. Within any people group, there's going to be uh, disparages. And whenever you compare any race against any other race, there's going to be some kind of disparity of achievement or equality of outcome. The premises laws that happened during Jim Crow, more white people get affirmative action today than black people. More white women get affirmative action. Gay white Bullshit. men get affirmative action. Um, white men with one fifth Native American blood in them, they get affirmative action. So affirmative action, that's just a buzzword that white supremacists use to pre Yeah, you just admitted that a white man that's supposed to be a white supremacist can get uh, bonus points or affirmative action because he might have some native blood in him. Maybe he might be mixed race. Maybe he might be gay. Maybe he might have a disability. Well, he's going to be favored. But that guy, white guy that doesn't have no disabilities or is not a minority in some other regard, he is going to be looked over by educational, the government, in jobs. Uh, there's It's reverse discrimination and reverse racism, no matter what people like Tariq Nasheed say. Pretend that black people are somehow getting something that we don't deserve, which is what they do in the system of white supremacy. Hey, Tariq. Hey, Tariq. Hey, what's up, man? Um, hey, what's up, Bank? Hey, Tariq. Uh, now, this is, hey, hey. this is stupid here. RC should have not allowed this. This is Baked Alaska and... They're fixing to make a fool out of themselves and make Tariq look not so bad here. Hey, 
You got to hey, got... wash your ass, bro. Hey, by the way. Your ass is dirty, dude. <laughs> and I'm a better rapper than you. I, I, I got better hits than you. You <laughs> suck. You better wash your ass, you motherfucker. All right. Peace, dog. Bake the laughter. Where's your bodyguard, Bake the Bake. Where's your bodyguard? Do you need some more I, milk? I, I will one on. He's standing guard outside. I will one on one take you out. I don't need no bodyguard, bro. And, 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 and shame on you for making fun of Tony. He got stabbed nine times, and you made fun of him. You're a Bank, shameful man. Stop threatening me, Bake. You threaten me all the time. You always threaten oh, me. Oh, he was come he, on. he was threatening you to a rap battle, which you should accept, by the way, if you have any guts. He threatened me so many times. That's why he got banned on Twitter for being a. Uh, now, I don't know about Baked Alaska. Uh, 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 Tariq accuses him of being all right, all right, but I do probably suspect that he probably isn't all right. He's just uh, maybe have been perceived as all, all right when he's all right, and maybe he doesn't take an active uh, voice uh, speaking out against the racist, race realist, all right, right supremacist, and he's on the right, so he's just perceived is alt right by Tariq. But I don't know much about the guy. I've seen him included. I think I did see uh, some black guy and Andy Worski once do a live stream and talk about him and in the context of that he really wasn't alt right even though he was being accused of it. A violent white supremacist. Oh so my God. Look, look how violent he is right now. He's so violent. White supremacy, gosh, it's came a long way. Yeah, well, I've he, never been violent. You, you are, you were violent, and you, you threatened me all the time. You and your bodyguard and the alt-right, you guys are extremely violent, and that's why they took you off Twitter. Um, where are you at? That's not why they took him off Twitter. They took him off Twitter because Treek's followers flags the hell out of everybody, and Treek uh, claim, uh, makes uh, false DMC claims on YouTube to get other people's videos flags and he done it to the point to where he got his YouTube channel removed and uh, then illegally against the terms of service of YouTube started up another channel uh, by another name and then like Bunty King and other people on uh, Twitter he's actively campaigning to get his people to flag them, uh, them channels and get them removed from Twitter so it's probably the same thing that happened to Bake Alaska. Tariq done it, and now he's going to try to spin that in his favor. There you go. All right, let me talk to my brother. I'm talking to my brother, Bake. Get out of here. You got a pink fucking phone. I don't want you to see the company that I hang around. Go watch your ass, bro. I'm speaking to my brother here. This is my brother. I'm out. I'm out. Get him out of here. I'm talking to my brother here. RC is my brother. I love your hustle. I see it's hustling these white supremacists. I love this guy. Because I know this is a hustle part. There's the hustle card again. I'm going to turn it off. Go make me something to drink and come right back in just a second. All right, I turned off the screen capture for a, for a minute to uh, go make me a drink. We'll get back at it. This uh, is already, um, video's already a minute long, and we're only like uh, 20 minutes or so into the video. So it's going to be a long video, but I'm going to keep critiquing. I'll try to go a little bit faster. All right, but he's a smart by brother. The way, by the way, keep note that my mentioning of affirmative action wasn't to say that affirmative action somehow has been ameliorating the victimhood of blackness by any stretch. My, my bringing up affirmative action was simply to say that you can't sit with a straight face and say that white supremacy is ingrained in society when literally governmentality has tried to push when literally the opposite is true and whites aren't shown favor by the law, but blacks or minorities are. Now keep in mind that it's biased towards minorities that way, but as far as like the laws uh, other than affirmative action type laws are neutral and people get discriminated by racist in power by both black and white, like a black judge can discriminate against a white uh, a criminal and a, a black judge can discriminate against a white criminal. Try to push and propel non-whites back into society. Um, and my question to you, Tariq, is how are you not literally becoming a caricature of someone who is serious when you literally say that everything is white supremacy? You've called, you call Baked Alaska white supremacist. Because he is. Literally because someone 
on a personal level, who is my friend, <laughs> who's actually, you know, done a lot to help me in terms of creative design, creative content, and, and managing my brand. How can you say someone like Baked Alaska is literally a white supremacist? Because Has you're gonna have to, brother. You're gonna have to listen. Don't troll. I told you, we're not gonna troll. Bake Alaska, understand? He's a troll. You, I know you're a troll too, but we're not gonna do that. You, know I know the hustle. You're a hustling guy, and I respect the hustle. But don't call always call the call hustle card. Might um, as well call him a coon. You're still all the, time. With the white supremacists because the white supremacists they've always used black people to regurgitate their talking points so they can use you as a shield. My thing is, I'm glad that you're getting money off of it. Ain't nothing wrong. Did you notice that uh, black conservatives are token Negroes argument there? Another logical fallacy and ad hominem to discredit the uh, arguments of black conservatives. What's wrong with that? I, I pay certain black folks to regurgitate that same stuff that you do. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you're getting paid. There's a lot of black folks who play that whole, I'm a black conservative, what about black on black crime? And they're down with teams. Um, black empowerment. Shout out to Candace Owens. She was one of those people who ran game on the white supremacists. I love her. They propped her up and she was secretly getting intel on these damn white supremacists and I love that system. But they kind of exposed her a little bit, but I still take my hat off to her. Um, shout out to Joy Villa. She was another one walking around with the Trump hat and all that stuff and they found out she was low-key hustling. So, Got to discredit every black conservative with a voice. I don't like Candace Owens at all, but uh... I don't think she's being paid by a white supremacist. I respect the hustle, and you're low-key hustling too, and I love it. Get all your money out of these white supremacists, because in a system of white supremacy, they create economic deprivation. So you got to get your money from them any way you can. So I respect your hustle, brother. Right. You know, I, I, I don't know about your audience. I don't know what their, their, their average IQ is, but I want to make sure that the general audience is understanding what's happening. I'm literally giving you specific analysis about so, how, wh how, 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 how white supremacy has to be diluted as a power structure, given certain, certain things that are happening. And you're literally- Not only diluted, not just watered down, but disabled. Uh, totally nullified and reversed in some cases with trying to bring minorities uh, up to par in uh, parity of equality of outcome. Literally just engaging in deprecating comments about uh, saying that I'm engaging in a hustle. You have to remember, this isn't any kind of hustle to me. I have I'm a job problem. and what I do as a political operative is what I get paid for. Everything I do as a public figure, quote unquote, that's because I have a passion for problems that are arising in society and people like you who sees everything as either it's a hustle or it's Brother, you have to uh, play that uh, hustle card different. You can't get on a defensive. You have to attack him for actually making a million dollars doing the race baiting. You have to attack him for being a fucking bigot himself against uh, homosexuals. You have to be able to know, like that he uh, said in one of his streams, that if he won the lottery, there would be no more hidden colors. He, there would be no more lux, uh, uh, lectures. He would buy an island and him and his family would live on it and he would never work again because it's all about money to treat the sheep. And so he is the one that's hustling, but sir, RC, you have not studied Tariq enough to know these things. I hope that if you debate him again, uh, and every black person that debates him in the future will study him closely before they take him on and know how to get past this, you're hustling the white supremacy game and uh, kowtowing to the white supremacist for money card. Not people like you are you're you you're the one with the hustle. You want to create and continue racial animosity, so you continue to get paid and write books and try to uh, use yourself as a personality. For me, this isn't a hustle. This is what I believe. This is what I was taught. No, this is how no, this is what no, I was raised no, with. No, you don't. Um, and also, see the thing is, brother, I, you, game recognized game. I know you hustling. Even that whole thing you were talking about the American Voice Pack and you the, the national guy and that CL Bryant's pack. No, it's not. That's not CL Bryant's pack, brother. That's Scott McKay's thing. And Scott McKay, Scott McKay runs a website called The Hayride. And Scott McKay is a known, he's another white supremacist. On his website, The Hayride, they got little articles on there about me. So you, you tied in with all these. I did not know who he was. I did a little research a while ago. 
couldn't find anything about him being associated with white supremacy or the all all right these white supremacists and they're the ones who are backing you i'm not knocking your hustle brother also family if you're listening google scott mckay and put scammer in there just look up scott mckay and scammer and also google scott mckay and uh, when I did that, there was a lot of pro-black sites. I didn't even read the article, but I Googled Scott McKay alt-right, Scott McKay and white supremacists, and I couldn't find any connections to the alt-right or white supremacists. A snake oil salesman. He's a well-known con artist, suspected white supremacist. He has websites with all types of anti-black... And every time Tariq uses that word, suspected white supremacist, you should call him a confirmed black supremacist because it's in his videos, it's in his streams, and it, whenever he's not talking to, to black people, whenever he's talking to other pro-blacks, he brings this up. He don't harp on it a lot, but my God, don't let him get away with that suspected white supremacist thing. Everybody's either a white supremacist or suspected white supremacist or a black person being a black white supremacist, you have to disable that and call him the black supremacist that he is. He is the racial supremacist and he is projecting that on uh, outward so he can make money, so he can attack his enemy and so he can get his followers to donate money and to support him. Rhetoric. They had articles about me. So it's not a coincidence that this brother is on here being the mouthpiece for these white supremacists because they're too cowardly to step to me. They'll push you out there because you, nobody really knows you. And I'm not saying that to disparage you. I know you're trying to get your weight up, but it, they'll let you put yourself out there. And it's nothing to kind of debunk what you're saying because you don't really have a rep to maintain. But the Mike Cernovich and people like that, the white supremacists like him. And, and, and Mike, he's a known white supremacist. He, he is admitted of being down with the alt-right. He tried to deny it later, but we know that Mike is a, a white supremacist himself. And they, you got a white supremacist baked the last... And he, didn't, he, he admitted that he was alt-right when he really didn't understand what the alt-right was. I mean, I don't follow the dude, but I get his... I mean, I haven't done no research on him. I'm just subscribed or liked to his Facebook page and see videos like this one that comes across my feed, and I watch enough of them to know that he does not put a a white supremacy, racial component, race realist component into his belief system. And it's never once, uh, I've never seen anything white supremacist out of Cernovich. In there himself, this guy has all types of anti-black, um, white genocide, black powers, white genocide, all this stupid shit that these dudes try to use to justify dominating and mistreating people based on race, and they try to hide it behind people like you, and I understand it as long as you're getting your money, because what you're doing is what I call the Booker T. Washington hustle. See, Booker T. Washington did the exact same thing you're doing. He was the, the guy running around black society. Another thing, Tariq, I have studied cult apologetics, Christian and cult apologetics like Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, and all these people that use mind control. Creating your redefining terms like redefining racism, creating new terms like race soldier, creating two new terms like Booker T. Washington hustle. This is all a form of manipulation and mind control. And it's also very underhanded, uh, devious, and unscrupulous debate tactics to try to make it look like he's winning the debate. He's saying, hey, cast down your buckets where you are. Stop trying to fight white supremacy. And a lot of black people were mad at Booker T. Washington. But secretly, Booker T. Washington couldn't stand white supremacists, and he funded a lot of black radical groups secretly. So that's a long-time hustle that I can respect, brother. You are my brother, and I love you, R.C. Right. It, you know, it's really it's, it's odd how you continue to talk about days that are, are, are really long forgotten. You have to remember, Tariq, we're in 2017. There is no need for a black separatist ideology. It literally only serves as a detriment to society. And furthermore, you have to know, perception is entirely subjective. So uh, much of the stuff that you're saying to a, attempt to slander or ad hominem attack American voice pack and our treasurer, Scott Whoa, McCain. whoa, 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 wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. You said, what did I say that was incorrect? You that, said Scott McCain. Almost everything you said, Tariq. Hey, not running that, is that not Scott McCain's pack? 
It's C.L. Bryant founded our PAC. If you know how PACs work, the founding member essentially creates the vision, the scope, and the mission. They're also pretty much in charge of... Uh, oh, money. Who so controls the money, brother? He is, is, Scott McKay is a treasurer. He's a, glor he's a glorified... The he controls the money, sir. He controls the money, sir. Let's not play those little word games. Let's not go there. Don't help no, me. The, 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 money is controlled the, money. By our, the money is controlled by our attorney who files all of our... Oh, stop our, it. All of our finances. And stop by the it. way... Uh, you're welcome for that white supremacist money that I paid you with, that $100, to get you to do this debate. Because the Stupid fucking move. I know you're being sarcastic, but, I mean, it's also very interesting that everybody should know that you have to pay fucking Tariq Nasheed to get him to, uh, uh, to debate. He was actually asked the question one time on one of the streams I've seen. A guy says, how can I get you to come uh, to my... Uh, school or something and speak and he said like and Tariq's responded like yeah I always get brothers trying to get me to come here and try to get me to come here and I got one thing to say it's all about the money show me the money so Tariq it's all about the money he would not debate me because I'm a known nobody uh, I'm I'm very, very unknown and I would never pay to debate him he's already blocked me from his Ustream channel so I cannot comment uh, on his uh, chat rooms there. Uh, maybe one day I should call and just try to talk to him and record it live because I think I could do a little bit better job than what R.C. and Jesse Lee Peterson have done. The difference between you and I is that I actually care about the trajectory of where the black community is going. Um, <laughs> Again, people can say, you know, that 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 makes me an identitarian to some perspective because I specifically care about my race, and that's what Mike Cernovich does. He cares about his race, as he should do. I care about my race, so I talk about black issues. So you can continue to call Mike Cernovich a white supremacist, despite the I, fact I, that. I, I, oh, and I know you have to save him. I know you have to save him. But okay, so this is caring about race. Um, this is one of Mike Cernovich's quotes about Trayvon Martin. Okay, so this is all about. Caring about race. Yeah. Uh, what did he say about Trayvon? What's that disgusting ass quote about uh, I, Mike? I, I, know the quote. I can, I can Trayvon, tell you the quote. Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin, Trayvon Martin uh, didn't get to rape somebody because he got got before he could rape somebody. So is that all about caring about your race? That's locker room talk. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what. I don't know if Cervanovich said that or not. Maybe he did since R.C. acknowledged it. Um, that's all I'm you have to understand, he's a, he's a provocateur. He does things that he needs to do for his brand, and that's, and that's great. Um, but specifically, you have, been, you have yet to get any... That's all locker room talk until somebody starts getting killed. So, okay. if... You sure. you get to give any a you get to give any historical context or any sort of actual analysis that proves or, di or that proves how white supremacy hasn't become a diluted power structure. My argument to you is simple, and it's a shame. It's a shame that Ben Shapiro, uh, a white person, is one has one of my favorite quotes about contemporary black society. But if you're black and if you do not have kids out of wedlock. If you graduate high school, if you don't commit crimes and have a job, you will succeed in society. So many of the ills of black people that you are talking about right now is caused by poverty. That's not a saying. Ben Shapiro does say that, but that is just a plain up uh, truth of the matter thing. I think it was a Raspus group that come out with that study that says that uh, if people, uh, kids that are in uh, in poverty, that if they will stay married, if they will not have kids before they get uh, married, graduate, get a job, and keep it, 75% of them will move into the middle class before they reach the age of 30. And that's, uh, they did this, I think it was Raspus, it was a left-leaning group that actually did this study, and I have it here on my a post about it here on my website, and Ben Shapiro does bring that up uh, quite a bit. He makes that point because it is true. A fatherlessness, if you grow up without your father, you're nine times more likely to live in poverty. You're four times more likely uh, to go to prison. Uh, if you look, just uh, Google fatherless stats, and you'll see that one of the best things that can happen to you is to grow up in a house with your father there 
because your chances of succeeding in all uh, areas of life are reduced tremendously whenever you do not have a father in the home and active in your life on a daily basis to love and care and nurture you and guide you into adulthood and success. And it's caused by crimes that they are committing. On a fundamental level, as long as they accomplish the things I just mentioned, they will not come in contact with police. Oh, so, okay, okay. So why, wait, wait, stop, brother. Stop, you're trolling, stop. Let me unpack what you're saying. Now you're just throwing out those bullshit Ben Shapiro talking points, huh? Okay, black people commit crime. That's the problem with black folks. We like committing crime. Why do black people like committing so much crime? What is it about black people that makes us commit so much crime? Uh, I Thug culture. Rap music. Try those on for size three. You used to contribute that to that, remember? Wash your ass, wash your ass. And he really is a terrible rapper. If you haven't heard his rap songs, you got to check them out. I think that much of it has to, much of it has to do with the lack of a nuclear family. Okay, so why is it that black people, out of all the people in the world or in the country, why don't we have a nuclear family? Is it the Democrats? Yeah, I, I can, and I can, and I can literally explain. To Another reason is that feminism has affected Black America more than America in general. And one thing that I was disappointed to learn in studying all this is that there's a lot of animosity between. Uh, black males and black females. Uh, it's uh, really bad off. Uh, I followed two dudes on uh, YouTube, O'Shea Duke Jackson and uh, Ringo TV, and they both uh, made posts one day about that if uh, you're paying child support to an ex, you should abandon your child before you pay child support to that. And I kind of got the suspicion that both of them were kind of like MGTOW, men going their own way, but they are not against all women, just black women. You look at the MGTOW guys that are white, they don't, well, I'm not going to date white people. They're like, I'm not going to date any women because they're, uh, they're against women, not just women of their own race. And there's a lot of problems between uh, uh, males, uh, black males and females more so than in other races. It's a cultural thing. You how it was the Democrats. Okay. This is boring at this point. Okay, it's the Democrats that stopped black folks from getting the It will take me a long time. It's very simple. In the 1980s, when black men were entering the workforce in literally record numbers uh, under Ronald Reagan, there was something that happened afterwards. You've seen, uh, you've seen dependence policy become largely incentivized. It literally became more financially incentivized for you to have multiple kids out of wedlock and get on government. Oh, you froze, you froze, bro. That's why I like you. I like you to get to your... That's been the case from the get-go. It was designed that way to break up the family. Uh, and it just affects the black family more. Back in the days, uh, uh, back in the 60s, the uh, fatherless rate among blacks was uh, below 30%. Now it's like 73%. Uh, Blacks were more likely to be employed and to live in a, a house with their both parents, both in times of Jim Crow and even during slavery. Even though uh, it was a marriage for blacks was illegal back then, more black kids grew up in the presence of both their father and their mother back then than today. And that has all kinds of other trickle down social implications that causes problems. I agree with what uh, RC said. The biggest root of the problem is uh, of the deficiencies and dysfunctions in the black America is the high proportionate rate of illegitimacy and fatherlessness. Point, so you don't start spewing all of that canned bullshit. Um, you're freezing up. He's freezing up again. He's freezing up again. There kids out of wedlock because they started locking men uh, locking locking men in jail who weren't paying their child support now i'm not saying that that's a bad policy in and of itself but that was a liberal policy and in you know in the context of all the other okay. policies, well, the democrats made them do it the devil okay. made them do it the democrats made them do it okay uh well you know that that whole family structure breakdown started in the 1960s it didn't start in the 80s go to the morning report it talked about that but that had nothing to do with the democrats or the republicans and Tariq is actually correct there whenever uh, the uh, 
uh, 15 when the Civil Rights Act of uh, 65 was uh, signed and all that. Basically, black America uh, decided to become a distinct subculture and to not assimilate into the main culture. And that's when a lot of the anti-white stuff that you don't want to be perceived as acting white or uh, not being black enough, uh, that's when it all started to happen. And that was whenever the war on poverty started. And in the 50s, it was the Great Society. And that was the things that initiated and really bring about the uh, high fatherless rates in black America. And, and most of it's within the urban settings. And some, uh, like uh, in, uh, in New York over more babies are aborted than are born. And in some of the ghettos, 90, over 90% 90 of the kids, like in the Bronx, are raised in single mother homes. They've got a straw man argument. So you're saying that the problem with black folks is the Democrats. I'm saying dependence policy in the 80s and 90s. If the 90 percent, uh, over 90 percent of blacks voted Democrat, if they voted, changed to Republican, that would change a whole hell of a lot about black America because the liberals would no longer be able to oppress black people and black people would not be able to op be oppressing black people the way they do holding each other down by saying that they're not black enough if they uh, uh, or they're acting white if they do the things to succeed. Ideology plays a big part. Look at North uh, Korea and South Korea. They're the same genes. The only difference is that some is socialist communist and, and uh, South Korea embraces uh, democracy and the free market and capitalism and the success rates. North Korea is the poorest country on the earth. Uh, on the earth and South Korea is they have a 15 point higher uh, IQ rate than the North Koreans and they are so much more uh, uh, successful and it's the same kind of leftist ideology the socialism that leads to communism of the left is oppressive and it oppresses no matter who it affects it affects all races it just affects minorities and especially blacks more drastically uh was it, was it drastically uh, devastated the black community and that okay. was created by, by liberalism okay That's amen so, so rc you got some that liberal really policy right. it wasn't race specific rc that wasn't a race specific Damn policy sure everybody could have got access to that policy why did that policy specifically target they targeted black people because the democrat gentleman uh, to the black neighborhoods. Same reason that there's most uh, Planned Parenthoods are in black neighborhoods because the black communities are being targeted by the left uh, and they want to keep them down because they have to have a victim class so they can see themselves. The Democrats can, uh, leftists can portray themselves as the saviors. And as if, if uh, blacks lose their oppressions, uh, uh, Democrats and the leftists would never win another election. And so they have to continuously uh, oppress the blacks themselves and claim that it's the right that's oppressing them just to keep the blacks voting for them in outrageous numbers. Black folks then. I mean, you're making an argument for me because consequently I can say, yeah, crack was, uh, the government created crack, but they didn't force black people to do it, but they still did it. And does that, and, and people like you say that the crack epidemic was an instance of white supremacy. So my question, which one is it? Is it individual responsibility exists or is it we should blame other people? I believe it's the former. Okay, you just changed the subject. Let's go back to what I asked you, sir. Are you here? You're freezing. You're freezing. I don't see you. Okay, I don't see you. I'm going to let that, I'm going to let that come back. No thing, RC, you should have never let him do a pic profile, a profile picture, and you do live feed. It shows your emotion more. That's another advantage he has over you. Don't agree to another debate with him like that. Again, one second, you guys. So I'm just going to recap just for everybody so they can understand. We have a debate right now. Cernovich Media is hosting the debate between RC Maxwell 
aka Black Hannity, at Black Hannity on Twitter, and Tariq Nasheed, at Tariq Nasheed on Twitter. Um, so for anybody, anybody coming in, uh, this is a, a heated debate. It's a great conversation. I'm glad that we can be hosting it, and I'll let you get back. Where we, I think we have uh, RC's feedback, so I'll let, let you go back in there. There you go. So the question is, what was it specific about black people that allowed black people to be so affected by those policies that were not race specific? Culture. Uh, I, I, you're asking me why black people oh. flock to welfare. That's that's a question that I can't answer. Um, but I would say it's likely oh. it, it's, it's 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 literally a, for, a forbidden fruit that was dangled out by liberals and black people oh. took the bait. Black people oh. took the bait. Okay, but you can't answer why. It's the boogeyman thing. So black, it's that whole white supremacist concept that black people are the boogeyman. See, that's why I say white supremacy is a religion. White supremacy is a religion. And I know Mike and all these guys are listening. You guys are part of the white So is black supremacy and Afrocentrism and the black conscious movement. Religious devotion. White supremacy religion. And in that religion, whiteness is God, blackness is bad, blackness is evil, blackness is the boogeyman, blackness is going to get you, blackness, we don't know why, we don't know how to stop it, but it's going to... All these things that he's saying about blackness, really he applies to whiteness. ...going to get you and beware and buy our next book, watch our next show, come to our next alt-right meeting. It's a money grab. It's nothing but a religion. You cannot <laughs> go into the origin of why these Remember, things work. Remember, was worth it's almost $3 million dollars so just two years ago. That lack of self-awareness on that point is hilarious, by the way. If okay. You know, okay. You know, okay. White supremacy as the boogeyman all the time. So you, your lack of self-awareness is but literally because, hilarious. Because we're in a system of white supremacy because they said so. The white supremacist really? told us that. So, yes. The so, white supremacist so, told us that. Yes. So, so you still get to prove how we're in a state of white supremacy. I have proven to you. I've already literally. You've not responded. I've already told you about why that there are literally, a, you know, non people, non POCs, uh, or sorry, non white or protected class. Um, anyone who is characterized as a white supremacist gets censored, and they're considered a taboo in society. You've not I'm responded. Sorry, you've you not say, responded to all of these claims. Because that's not true. Like warrants, by the way, because they not not doesn't have a Twitter. That's not true. What you're saying, you're just making stuff up. That's not true. That's like, what, how do I respond to a lie? That's not true. So you're what, saying that white supremacy is not, a, is not a societal taboo. What, what you said is a lie. There's no black, black people. Said, when you so, keep, whoa, 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 whoa. So I'm talking about black people. You keep saying non-white. I'm talking about black people are not protected. Black people are not a protected class. White supremacy dominates all areas of activity right now. Labor, law, education, sex, war, religion, and other things. Tell me which area of activity right now is not dominated by white supremacy. Name one. All the ones you just named, Tariq. Uh, I don't know how, I don't know what to say to you. Uh, the banking system, <laughs> the banking system is not dominated by whites, stereotypical. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hollywood, Hollywood uh, athletics. A uh, word on the banking system. You know that our last, the, the last great recession when the housing bubble burst was because uh, uh, Carter made a law saying that banks had to actually give preference to uh, high-risk loans, people that didn't uh, were, were more high-risk, and he made the law, and then Obama, uh, then Clinton came along and gave it teeth, and because of that, they started they would the banks would get penalized if they didn't actually start giving more. Uh, uh, loans to high-risk people, and that disproportionately went to black people, and then so enough black people got into homes and other minorities got into homes that they could not afford, and when enough of them defaulted, that caused the uh, whole res uh, economy to go into a great recession and caused the uh, housing bubble to collapse, and that was all because a favoritism that benefited minorities and blacks more so than other minorities. Yes, whites could go also go out and get high risk loans, but these uh, the force and pressures of the government to do this uh, uh, was uh, disproportionately affected black people or benefited black people more than white people. And so our system is actually whenever it shows favor it shows favoritism towards minorities and blacks and when it does it's always harmful not only to the whole country but to blacks and minorities themselves 
I would, say most, I would say most things are not dominated by white. Saying that the athletics and you got black people getting blacklisted for speaking up against white supremacy right now, and you got team owners talking about their players are inmates and slaves and all. You trying to say <laughs> athletics is not dominated by white supremacy? Are you insane? Then why are seventy percent of foot over seventy percent? <coughs> excuse me. Why are over seventy percent of football players black and they're millionaires and they're talking about oppression? And whenever the uh, Texas, uh, Houston Texans uh, coach said that about the prisoners, that was a, a figure of speech. He wasn't actually calling black people uh, 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 prisoners, and they're not being oppressed just because they're taking a knee. They're being oppressed because they're lowering the value, uh, the brand value and the money of the NFL that's the reason they've come under fire for protesting. And the whole narrative that Kaepernick, the Black Lives Matter narrative, that uh, Kaepernick and the other football players are supporting is bullshit from the get-go. There's not a large amount of Americans that think that black lives do not matter. There is not, uh, uh, there are not cops that are targeting black people uh, and they're, uh, America is not a fundamentally racist and white supremacist country. That whole narrative that Colin Kaepernick and them are protesting against, it's all bullshit. He got completely ostracized and made fun of on, nas on, a, on a national platform for having a problem, for literally forgetting the idiom. He, 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 he mentioned an idiom, he said it improperly, he literally got demonized. My point to you, and you cannot counter this, anyone who was at the Charlottesville, anyone who was at the Charlottesville event, they got photographed and they got quote unquote doxxed. Well, they, they lost their jobs. This is what happens to anyone who has provocative beliefs. How can you say that you can be an openly proud white supremacist in America and not be considered a social taboo? You're literally just lying to yourself. You're changing the subject. You just made. I like that point about white supremacy being taboo. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot more taboo to be a white supremacist than a black supremacist. Uh, nobody bats an eye. Whenever people say that black, when black people say that they're inferior, but let one white guy say it and it's going to be on, it's going to make the news. And uh, they make a big deal out of it all the time. And they're always looking for reasons to uh, frame a white person as a white supremacist, a Nazi, or a racist. And they'll tag the whole, uh, broad brush the whole race. Uh, you know, you can't call all uh, blacks criminal because there's, black criminals, but if there's a few white supremacists, all whites must be racist. It's a double standard. Some things, and I'm debunking the hell out of all of them. You said the banking wasn't controlled by white supremacy. The hell is uh, ba Banks are controlled by Jews. It's not by Jews? Well, so you're saying that Jews are not white? Uh, on a consensus form, Jews are considered their own. Now, uh, there's uh, Hispan uh, Hispanics are tied in with white people sometimes, but Jews are always on their own. And Jews of all races have the highest IQ of all. And so, yeah, they're in a lot of, they're like in the entertainment industry, in the media, uh, in uh, the diamond industry, in the loan industry. Uh, you know, uh, Jews have always been big bankers. And uh, a lot of the big banks, uh, are owned by Jews. There's no doubt about that. And the Fed is uh, the Federal Reserve is not a reserve, and it's not federal. And we should not be letting international bankers control our money and our banking systems. But it doesn't give favoritism to white people over black people. I just gave you an example of how they actually favor minorities over white people in lending. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, deflect my my uh, my authority on who's white and who's not. Your favorite white supremacist, Richard Spencer. Uh, he doesn't consider Jews white. By the way, also you have to realize people like Richard Spencer they rely on people like you to exist. If Teresa didn't exist, Richard Spencer wouldn't exist. Well, you also have the left, the liberals, and the uh, uh, the social justice warriors, the media, the academics that make it possible for Tariq Nasheed to exist and also for 
Richard Spencer to be so prolific? Brother, I can't deny you're being anti-Semitic. You're like, it's the Jews' fault. Are you <laughs> doing that, brother? Don't do that. You don't want to go down the anti-Semitic. I never said it was Jews' fault. I said whites don't consider Jews whites, and so, historically the banking, the banking institutions are controlled by, you know, lots of Jewish influence. There's nothing. There's so, nothing wrong with that statement on face. Jews, see, brother, you you don't let them get you into those white supremacist talking points, and you're gonna beat up on the Jews people based on religion because religion and race are two different things, by the way. But I don't. I'm, I'm gonna save you from that. I don't want to. I don't want you to go down that road, brother. You're using those talking points, and um, those guys in that room will throw your little black ass under the bus. So I want you to get your money. So let's reel it back a little bit. Okay, so uh, <laughs> you're talking about Charlottesville, all right? Talking yes. about. So we were talking about how they're being docked. Do you know those white extremists? Because there's a, there's a difference between white supremacists and white extremists. It took them weeks to arrest those white extremists out there, damn near, well, not damn near, they were killing people. It took them weeks to arrest those people. So that's white privilege, which is a part of white supremacy in itself. So let's not confuse white extremists. Yeah, also there was the black dude that tried to uh, use a makeshift torch to set a white dude uh, on fire. Uh, the things about him, yes, there was a couple of uh, white supremacists there that did hurt somebody, but the guy that run the girl over in the car was never proven that he was a white supremacist. And the fact of the matter is, is that when Trump said that some of them people are fine people, what he meant was that they were there to protest the removal of the statue, and most of the people that were there for that protest were not white supremacists. And if the Antifa and the alt-left uh, social justice warriors had not shown up, there would not have been any violence at all. It would have been a simple protest. People would have exercised their uh, free speech to protect historical monuments in our history, and nothing bad would have happened. And that's the difference between you and I, is that there's a little work that's take to unpack what happens as an implication and what caused that. You've actually explained no causality between there being weeks in order to identify and arrest people who have committed crimes. And this is what you do frequently. This is kind of, this is, this is your epistemology. You just blanketly assert everything as a white supremacy. And then you say, yes, I have won. And, and, okay. that's, and that's, that's the problem with your but underlying it's me, ideology. But, but it's saying it's me. It's not me. I'm quoting white supremacists themselves saying that this is white supremacy. You have politicians now who say we're in a system of Western power and Western supremacy and white supremacy. You have people having... Uh, American exceptionalism is not about white supremacy. These marches going around talking about how supreme and white they are. You have the alt right, which is your people; they're, they're part of that. You have Richard Spencer, which your people they act like they're bickering with each other, but they go around constantly talking about how they dominate and how they are white supremacists and black or, blacks are inferior. And you hang around with these people, Stephen Molyneux, who goes on and on about how black people have genetic lower IQs. Do you buy into that ideology, sir? No, because people are different. Stephen Molyneux is a great radio host. He has great discussions on race. He is a race realist. Some, you know, in, in a double belief, you know, he believes that there are. Now, you, you're not saying all the conditions on which he believes that there can be a propensity for blacks to have a lower IQ. You're obviously doing a bit of a straw man on that. But I don't have to defend. Stephen Molyneux has said uh, it's anywhere between 50 and 80 percent genetic, the IQ variance, the 15-point IQ variance average between black and white. And Stephen Molyneux is definitely a race realist. He is definitely a racist. He is definitely a white supremacist. Even though he's on the right, he does a real good job of talking about other right-leaning conservative issues. You should be disassociating from blatant people uh, like Stephen Molyneux. He's, and you need to understand what race real right what race realism is rc uh, you need to study that topic more and be able to uh, explain why the iq variance isn't genetic it's through things like work ethic uh uh uh, uh, uh stick to itiveness determination uh, creativity uh being relentless uh, uh being able to get along with other people to be able to be consistent, 
uh, to be able to think positively and not negatively. It takes a lot of things to be successful in life, not just IQ. And you need to be able to say that Stephen Molyneux and all the people that blame the lower success rate and the dysfunction in black America on IQ uh, uh, differences, you need to be able to refute that and, and stand against them because you give Tariq and other people on the left and the social justice warriors ammunition when you do not stand against these people. Uh, Mike Cernovich is not uh, racist, I do not believe, not white supremacist, not alt-right, but Stephen Molyneux definitely is. And everything Stephen Molyneux says. Wait, 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 wait. wait. No, so you agree? So you agree no, that there's some validity? So wait, wait, wait. You, you agree there's validity to black people having a lower IQ? No. He references... And this uh, race realism issue is brought up in one of the Hidden Colors films. And uh, Tariq twisted and does a halfway decent job of refuting it. But he does, he blames it all on racism instead of cultural problems within black America. I believe about 75% of the things that are wrong with uh, uh, black America and their deficiencies in achievement uh, is uh, cultural and it doesn't have anything to do with IQ or much to do and with an IQ. An old report that is pseudoscience um, that has been debunked by several people. That's not something believe in. However, but Molyneux not debunking the bell curve. He relies on the bell curve and doesn't see it to be pseudoscience. Everything that debunks the bell curve, he claims is pseudoscience when it really is like you say, it's the bell curve that is the pseudoscience. I will still gladly associate with Stephen Molyneux and talk to him about race because unlike people like you, he sees everything very practically. Now, I would dis disassociate all the way, bro. Practically, there is something that happens in the, in the scope of realism when you look at things to how they actually exist in material reality and break them down versus what you do when you well, just blanket that's statement called, say, that is called collaborating. All right, let me generalize but, everything. But wait, 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 sir, you, you're saying it's a blanket statement, but the people that you just said you associated with, this is something that they said. They said it. They said white people have an inferior IQ. This is their words, not mine. No, so not am I wrong for quoting him? Hello, you're, you're freezing, sir. You're actually, freezing. They actually say that blacks are genetically inferior, not that they have an inferior IQ. People try to deny that there is an IQ variation, uh, but that cannot be denied. It's just a statistical fact. But IQ tests are not really a good uh, measure of int intelligence and uh, not all uh, high IQ people succeed and not all low IQ people fail. Sorry about that. There we go. We'll get back here in one second. Okay. So, so okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, then you're back. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so, uh, so am I wrong for quoting this guy for saying that black people have an inferior IQ? Am I wrong for that? So you're saying that white supremacy exists because Stephen Molyneux likes to talk about racism, a race ra realism as a, a scholarship, right? Okay. So is it real that wait, 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 wait. race realism is white supremacy, Mr. RC? You need to disassociate with these people and not give Tariq Nasheed ammunition against all of us. I like wait, a lot of wait, things what? that Molyneux says, but I never share his videos, even though he's one of the best commentators out there on other issues besides race realism. Race realism? Define that. It's pretty much what you engage in when you when you view races and you say that there are certain oh, underlying oh, there are certain no. underlying occurrences and 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 so and you know a kind of descriptive analysis that you can make about people based on race. That's what you do all the time. So I don't know. That's not what race you're, realism you, is. Between between you and and, and Stephen Molyneux. 
define race realism. This is the term that you keep racist. using over and over. Both define that, please. Superiors. I just did. Super, race uh, realism. Racial is supremacist, much. that's for sure. It allows you to make descriptive and kind of predictions about sets of people based on race. So it's bad. Okay, so you, what you're saying is bad when I do it, but it's good when Stephen does it, right? I'm not saying, I know I'm saying you engage in it, he engages in it. Not, that doesn't prove white supremacy exists because a, a few people like to talk about race. Yes, it does. It just does not prove that systemic white supremacy exists. And you done let Tariq be and, chill and, and, the you know hell what I mean? Like, I'm not, I, I, I've, you're all over the place, brother. You're stuttering, you're freezing, you're, you're getting lost, brother. I, I, you're contradicting yourself, sir. They, they haven't given you all the good talking points yet. Like, well, I'm, let's wait on him to get back. Poor brother. Yeah, here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to transition here for a second, and I'm going to let that feed come back and get solid. By the way, just so everyone's aware of what's happening, this is a debate, a discussion between R.C. Maxwell at Black Hannity and Tariq Nasheed at yeah. Tariq Nasheed. It's been a very fascinating conversation so far. Looks like that feed is coming back. I just want to say thank you guys also for coming on the platform and being willing to do this. I know these conversations can be difficult, um, but I, I do think it's important that we start having them and in an open way. So I'll let you guys get back to it. Yes, indeed. So again, my point is, brother, and I, I don't want to beat you up, brother. I'm just trying to say, if you make a term, if you say something, and then I ask you, and you say something is okay with you, then I ask you to define it, and then you apply it to me in a negative way, you're, you're contradicting yourself. He's so got you're, you you're there, right RC. I, I, I would like for you to, to give a real definition of race realism. Race realism is not something that I embed, I buy into. You're asking me. But you just said you did. Wait, 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 time no, out, time you out. Let me, let, let, let me speak. Let me speak. Let me speak. You just said you did, brother. You, oh, no, he didn't. You just me. misdefined oh, it. Race realism. Try to get out of the hole that he did. Apply it to you unfairly, and say when others do it, it's okay, but whenever you do it, it's wrong. All racial supremacists are wrong. And whether or not I just keep saying it, sir. You keep saying this is something that Stephen Molyneux presses. I think Stephen Molyneux is someone who is a trained scientist for being a race realist. You gave Stephen Molyneux props for being a race realist. No, I gave him props for having good discussions on race, open and honest discussions on race without a race realist. Can you define the term, sir? And now you can't define it, my brother. I have defined it. I said race realism is when you make open and uh, overt descriptive analysis based upon sets of people based upon their race. And that's not something. No, it's not. It's whenever you claim that the IQ disparity is genetic rather than uh, it's nature over nurture, uh, genetic instead of uh, uh, cultural, and the possibility of racism. I prescribe to you, but this is what the conversation has turned into. You now no longer, you now no longer want to talk about whether or not white supremacy is ingrained in our society. You no longer want to talk about whether or not the myth of white supremacy existing is literally tertiarily related to your ability to make money. You don't exist, and and Richard Spencer doesn't exist unless there is racial agitation in this country, and that's why you want white supremacy to be a thing. You've not proven from white supremacy. Not proven how we're not. We're on a reverse trajectory. We're no. on the reverse. Hey, hey. 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 dog. Troll. Look around. Sir, stop trolling. Sir, you keep saying stuff and then you keep talking over yourself so you don't have to answer some gibberish that you just put out. That wasn't true. Well, you said that I'm making all this money from white supremacy. How? Who's giving me this white supremacy um, grievance money? Where am I getting this money from? You're, you're getting it from the threat construction. Let me let me explain to you how, 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 let, 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 let me explain to you how society works. You, you construct threats of whiteness dominating and becoming so pervasive in society that people can die. People can get, get hurt. Wait, 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 let me finish. Let me talk for more than 60 seconds without getting interrupted, please. You continually, wait, you continually do this. You literally even do this in the news feed. A shooting happens, white supremacy. So this is literally what you do. You construct threats. And you do that literally for yourself to be a public figure, for you to make money, for people to listen to the radio show, because they need to hear Tariq Nasheed talk about big, bad white supremacy. You are the literally the biggest walking contradiction and inherent Amen, inconsistency brother. that I've seen. People like Antonio Foreman, Stephen Molyneux, Baked Alaska, they are people who live without hatred in their heart. And that... Bullshit. Stephon Molyneux, he does not have overt hatred in his heart. 
but he does believe that blacks are genetically inferior. And whenever you think about like that, what is people going to do with that information? I mean, do uh, you don't think that somebody's going to decide, well, maybe we need to start killing blacks to cleanse the gene pool and raise the, uh, the uh, mean IQ across all races or the national mean IQ? Uh, are they going to do things like start uh, tinkering, the, you know, there's uh, tinkering with uh, genetic uh, sp uh, splicing and things like that, try to make blacks more smarter. Uh, what are we going to do? Are we going to uh, start systematically oppressing blacks again because they're not uh, uh, as so-called as smart as everybody else? People are going to do something with that idea that the IQ disparity is genetic. And whenever you say it's genetic, that means that it's fixed and it cannot be uh, done. And then they tie in IQ with violence instead of showing that the high criminality rate is because of culture, they tie it into IQ and say that blacks are just animals, and so that further justifies uh, uh, racial genocide on down the road. It burns you up the most. It burns you up the most that we're moving toward a society where blacks and whites yes, have race jokes together, where you see black teens letting their white friends say the N-word, Loosen up a little bit. That's not white supremacy. That's where society is going. And, and, and you just can't accept that. What's that one, brother? Don't oversell it. Don't no, oversell it. Don't mess your money. Brother. <laughs> now, brother, now, you are part of the Gay Lives Matter movement. Now, the thing is, yes, you're part of the Gay Lives Matter movement. Why do you say that? I don't, I'm not trying to put your business all the way out there, brother. But no, I, I, I'm, I'm a heterosexual. I date women. You can probably guess their race, but I date women. I've only dated women. But uh, I, I guess thanks for making I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not saying this to disparage you. Every picture I've seen of you has been with, like, these feminine-looking white men. I've never seen you with a pic, in a picture with check, a woman. Check not my once. Instagram. Check my Instagram. Now, you just had Baked Alaska. Did he look like an effeminate man? Now, uh, Tariq might be more... Uh, dominant might be more alpha uh, than RC, but RC should have shut him down and uh, called him a fucking bigot, a fucking homophobe, and should have pointed out that uh, Tariq also is married to a half-white person, a, a woman, and has a black, a white mother-in-law living with him, and should also know that almost every prominent figure in the black conscious movement, pan-African movement, uh, pro-black movement are uh, married to white people, even though they'll call uh, black people, black women that uh, date white men, bed winches and stuff. It's just outrageous. It's black okay. identity. <laughs> let, me, let me look this up because I've been looking. I've been looking for pictures of you with women, and I'm like, I, I haven't seen you with no women, um, and I just assumed that you were part of gay lives matter. But you know, it, you know, but. And that's still up on the bay. You, you know, you might not want to come out or whatever. I'm not trying to disparage you, brother. But the thing is, I was going to make a point. And, and this is another. And gay lives matter. Is that a term you've heard before? No, that's another unique uh, Tariq Nasheed uh, term to manipulate people. And it's also uh, an evil debate tactic to use. Because I'm doing no, the wait, wait, Actually, wait, on that note, let me just tell you that no, I, in fact, I'm actually a Western male chauvinist. I believe in traditional gender roles and stuff like that. So um, that's something that I believe as being integral to the black community being able to survive. So that's actually your team. All this uh, gender dysphoria, so and all this so aggressive so that. so, of so gender, that's your team. Chauvinist. So you're a male chauvinist. So, that, how are you, so you date white women, of course. If that's what you claim. So how do you guys, these guys, we talk about white genetic um, fear, um, um, white genocide. How do they feel about a black man having sexual relations with white women producing possibly black offspring, which is... Well, back in the 50s, I think it was like 14% of the population was okay with mixed relationships and mixed marriage. And today, that uh, percentage is uh, like almost 85%. And Tariq Nasheed will say that America's more racist now than ever, but uh, the acceptance of mixed marriages and mixed relationship is a strong indication of uh, racism in any country, in any society, and our country has gotten a lot less racist 
it's no longer systemically racist and the general population uh, is a lot less racist. There's two studies on my uh, website to where a world's value study uh, asked the question of uh, would out of all the people who would you not want to live next door to uh, and several people types of people were listed and black people was one of them less than five percent of people in America said that they would not want to live next door to a black person in other countries over in Africa that's up like 30 40 percent in some uh, Middle East countries it's up 45 percent that uh, uh, the population wouldn't want to live next door uh, to black people then uh, another polling company uh, uh, not Rospin but uh, one of the big polling companies did a big poll and said do you think that uh, America needs more or less uh, diversity and people of different nationalities and ethnicities in the country and only five percent of the people said no we should not have more uh, eth ethnicities and nationalities uh, immigrating to America and uh, like 85 percent said yes it would be a good thing to have more racial diversity in America exactly what these guys are against how do they feel being around you yeah contrary to part for the relief uh, I'm not like always sitting in a room with Klansmen you know I don't <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't, it's not like I asked, hey, how do you feel about the fact that I might make a mixed baby? I mean, there's, 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 there's how many players in the NBA I, making mixed babies? I don't think I, they're worried about Black Kennedy. Um, well, they, they're the ones like well, Baked Alaska. He always talks about um, white survival, um, the white bloodline must continue. And it's very interesting that they would have a black person who's boning these white women among them. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. Really, and actually, in the Hidden Colors movie, Tariq talks about the concept of white genocide, and that's where uh, blacks and other people say that uh, white genes are recessive and black genes are dominant. And whenever uh, white couples, whenever white and black people uh, mix, that it's always going to be a predominantly black person. That is not true. Uh, some some uh, mixed race couples have one kid that's kind of looks black and one kid that looks obviously white and there's the theory that is whenever it's the gene uh, gene pool intermingles more that eventually racial differences of uh, the different uh, phenotypes and genotypes will uh, disappear the racial differences will all become there won't be very many real white people or very many uh, uh, real black people that the average person will be in the middle hue and that some of the racial uh, characteristics uh, facial characteristics will uh, intermingle and that there will be uh, uh, will eventually will get rid of the concept of race altogether interesting to you it is. I'm not even passing judgment. I just think I think it's very interesting. Not, let, not let, just, let me explain to you how the world works. So, based on the last he's a white person. So he wants to make sure that he has a white kid and so on and so forth. Um, there are also black people who believe that I shouldn't be dating white women. They believe that I should only procreate with the black race. So people have their own individual opinions and so on and so forth. That doesn't really bleed into people. See, as as you're forgetting, people like Baked Alaska, uh, they're, they're friends of mine. They don't, they, they have, would have no no reason to, to object to something like that. But so gonna, this, so they're friends with you because you regurgitate their talking points and they give you a little money on the side. And that's why they're friends <laughs> with you. That's they're not really assumption. Once again, that's a lie. That's an assumption. And that's this right. is all you do. This is all you've continued to do. No, that's because, right. so listen, you said that I get money from this person, but you can't name them. I name the people you get money from, like Scott McKay and all of these white supremacist suspects. These Tariq, you sell your, your, your books your movies, you do lectures, and anytime you come up with a special project, you put out a, a, a crowdfunding deal, all of your movies are, are, are financed by your followers, and then your followers go out and buy the movie on top of that, and you've had all kinds of side projects that are not related to uh, the race, race issue, and they give you money for that too. Uh, Tariq, you're probably worth three to three and a half million dollars right now you're rolling in it dude you're a big player in the race industry and without racism 
you would actually have to get a real job. And uh, uh, Mr. RC here, he could go ahead and continue to lead the pack or the group that he's with because it doesn't just focus on racial issues. It focuses, he focuses on conservative issues. And he would still have a job, but you would be out of a job if race relations got real good and the perception that America is a racist country went by, you would be unemployed, Tariq. So you, these are specific people you get money from. I, I, like I, I have properly <laughs> identified how you ent entirely, how your brand functions. Your <laughs> brand cannot function without constructing white supremacy as a threat. So literally, you have to continue to say it's a threat. My brand, my brand is not about, what, I don't know what you think, you know, I, I literally, you know, my goal is just to make sure that Trump Trump wins in 2020 and that the Republicans hold districts in 2018. So, you know, my my existence is not based on commodifying some sort of identity or some sort of threat of identity. Yours is. Well so said, there are RC, obviously well said. reasons to, to be suspect of your Trump. motives and, and your ethical and, and your, your, your knowledge construction. There's, there's yeah. reasons to be suspect and there are valid reasons because you yeah. can't exist without creating a, a race war. Get your money and bang those white women, brother. I'm all with you. Wink, wink. I'm with you. I'm with you all day. He's you relentless, ain't he? Well, I love you. I love you. I know the hustle, brother. I've been in the streets. He I know can't the game, let the brother I'm make a you. point without assassinating his character because his followers are going to eat this stuff up. Tariq does this kind of stuff so the people in the middle will think that he won. And there is a, a, a later I'm going to do a... a uh, another stream, I found a, a thread, a site that actually has a conversation going on already. A bunch of black people are sitting around talking about this debate, and I'm going to do another uh, uh, video on that later, showing how Trick's followers just foam at the mouth over him using these kind of debate tactics, and they'll just smear the shit out of a black conservative's character rather than even looking at any of his claims. Money, my goddamn self. Keep it popping, brother. I thought you were gay live now. I'm, I'm glad that you're out here banging these white women. That's what's up. I love it. Anyway, um, what, what, where else are we going with this thing? Because, uh, so, so, I mean, like, just as, as a summary, I've made very obviously concise arguments. White supremacy is a social taboo. White supremacy gets sin. Okay, you're freezing up again, brother. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and let him come back here real quick. Uh we're going to be wrapping this up here in a I would imagine a few minutes it's but while, almost uh, over y'all. Coming back. Again, I've gone you guys, over 2 RC hours. Well to I know this is very long. Very few of y'all going to watch this um, long. Sure. And, so I appreciate y'all you know, watching. I'm glad you guys have come Check on out my website at screwyourfeelings.com and like this search again. for Damon Witzel on YouTube and uh, see uh, my race-related uh, videos and no articles. One. But give me the reputable ones. Jack Postavik, Post, whatever the fuck his name is. All of these guys who are on the ADL white supremacist list, those are the ones I want. I the want ADL, the big The ADL's a joke, and if you don't know that, then that shows how you, aware, you, that shows how aware you, you are. The ADL and the SPLC, Southern Poverty Law Center, are all jokes. They're, they're like hate groups that supposedly uh, track hate groups when they should be tracking themselves. Brother, don't call the ADL a joke and you call, you're making disparaging remarks about Jewish brothers and sisters. Don't do that. I've not made a single disparaging remark. I've literally just made a truism. You said that whites dominate every instance of society. I gave an, in an industry where it's dominated by ethnic Jews and you're continuing me to say that I've disparaged Jews, right? This is where your line of thinking just makes no sense. You're making, you're making disparaging remarks about the Jewish community. I don't want you to go that road, brother. That's going to mess your little money up, brother. Keep your money going. Don't, don't fuck your money. Don't. All right, brother. All right, let me, let me reel you back a little bit because you, you're doing too much. All right. All right, anyway, brother. Um, RC, where can people find you, brother? Where can people get, right, uh, find you online? Well. And where the white women can find you? Where can they So I appreciate y'all tuning in. We're two hours and 15 minutes in, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off, and I'll have this video up tomorrow. And you guys have a good week, and uh, be blessed. Bye, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed a little bit, and I hope uh, somebody learned something.